Hi! Are you interested in learning how to imitate oils with Coral Painter 2021? This is perfect place for you! Welcome to Thick Paint Tutorial! My name is Magdalena Proszowska, I am a digital painter with a lot of experience in traditional mediums. You can follow me on Instagram or any social media and ask me questions about software or the process of the painting. Before I start painting, I want to change a few basic settings of thick paints. New thing in Coral Painter 2021 is that anytime you want to paint with special brushes, the software will throw you a pop-up asking you how do you want to manage your special layers. And by this I mean some of the brushes in Coral Painter require the usage of non-default layer. Um, for example, watercolors, liquid ink and thick paint. I will choose an option uh, so the new layer will be created every time I am using special brush. Okay, so the first adjustment I want to do is the direction of the lights on the thick paints. Uh, because I am left-handed, I usually do diagonal lines from top uh, left corner uh, down to bottom right corner. And I think if I change the uh, direction of the lights uh, from canvas surface light and the direction from left side to the right side, it actually enhances the brush strokes that I am doing much better. Um, it's really tricky with the surface lights because you saw that uh, the local color of the uh, brush strokes changed as well when I was manipulating with it. So uh, what I will do, I will create a, a default layer below and paint the exactly same color with a brush I know that is not affected by thick paint and go back to the surface light and compare um, the thick paint color to the color I have below to match it properly. So I know the lights is not affecting the local color of the brush stroke. If you play a little bit more with this, you can create a really cool looking effect. You can add more uh, directional lights, uh, change the color, etc. But for me, for my purpose, this is enough with just one. And as I said, like this is normally the uh, brush strokes I do. And I think this just, if, if I have a direction of the light from there, the um, relief in impasto looks much better. But this works for my left-handed brush strokes. For you, maybe something else will look even better. Okay, let's clean the canvas for now. And next thing I want to change is the paper, because this will affect how the brush interacts with the surface a lot. Um, and what I really want to stress the most is to find a good scale of the texture. I am using uh, my custom textures that I created uh, with the canvas. Um, and you can see I am trying to find the best scale when the texture is visible but not dominating over the brush strokes for that resolution. So this looks good. Uh, the next thing I want to change is the mixer. You can open any picture and use it as your mixer pad. I have scans of some oil paintings, uh, very abstract ones, and I want to use it as the base of my sketch. Because if you are using instead of sample color, you choose to sample multiple colors, you can paint with the fragment of the pad and uh, in effect the brush stroke is much more natural and looks much more traditional than a flat color. So those were all the changes I wanted to make. Now I can start working on the painting. Here we go. Uh, I'm working from life, so this uh, li still life was set by me uh, and it's here in front of me when I'm painting. And the uh, first thing I want to do is to capture general space that the objects will occupy. And I'm just using simple uh, straight lines to slowly measure, but not overdo the details. Like those supposed to be just the suggestions. I am using dry flat knife from thick paints. I really like this brush because it has the hint of the texture itself as well. So it really gives a great tone. 
actually most of the painting. I paint basically just with three brushes and dry flat knife is one of them. I am very carefully placing all the lines just where they're supposed to be. Also because when I will start adding the local colors uh, the line of the sketch will mix uh, with the paint I will be using so I don't want to have the line too thick. If I want to remove any lines from the thick paint layer I will switch to the eraser tool that is, is the same category of the brushes. For the background I choose a warm color because my still life will be dominantly blue um, and I want to have the effect that you can a little bit see through uh, the undertone and this composition of complementary colors will look really nice at the end. With the sketch ready, I want to start with the background first and just fill in this big space with the colors. Um, and I will do it with my favorite brush, Oil Dry Pastel from Thick Paint Compatibles. Yes, now Painter uh, is no longer limiting you to just one category for a special layer to paint with, but you have a whole range of new brushes that you can use with special layers. So anytime you open a window with the brushes, at the bottom you can see what layers this brush is compatible with. I really like working with this brush. The way it interacts with this texture, it's so lovely. And in a, such a big scale, even if it's pastel, it actually fakes a little bit a dry brush. Um, yeah, did you notice how well brushes works? My canvas is 2500 and the brushes are around 150, 200 or more of this uh, scale and everything works smoothly. It's just incredible. I am keeping background on separate layer, so colors I am using to paint objects of still life with aren't picking up colors from the background. This way I can manipulate what areas I want to keep wet and what acts as if they were dry. And with the magic of digital painting I can return to any layer and still paint wet. Uh, in traditional painting, those steps would need to be carefully planned because when real paint dries off, you can't do anything besides overpaint it. I am trying to imitate here the technique called a la prima, uh, that refers to direct painting approach, where paint is applied uh, wet on wet without letting the uh, previous layer to dry off. Um, the term a la prima means at first attempt. So I am really careful with choosing my colors and trying to instantly hit the spot of the value, uh, saturation and the hue with the paint. I am also reminding myself all the time the conditions of the light. So the still life is a scene painted indoor. I will have a warm shadows and blue lights because the source of the light in this picture is my north window that have color, mostly color of the sky. So it's a blue light. And the interior, so walls and furnitures are a warm tone and they will act as a bounce light and influence shadows. As I mentioned earlier, I dominantly paint the whole scene just with two brushes, the dry flat knife and loaded wet knife. I have uh, opened the um, advanced brush settings, but I'm actually not changing much. There is just one option that I like to turn on, uh, because I use a Wacom Art Pen that detects the rotation of the pen, so I want to set the rotation of the brush tip to rotation. And I have easier time to achieve those hard edges and soft edges just by rotating the pen in my fingers. The rest of the painting from now on is just careful, measured placing of correct colors in correct places. You will see me later do some funny things like flipping the canvas upside down and this is just to refresh my view and spot the places, any areas that require more attention. As this painting is based on realism, so it should look realistic even upside down. 
but I have to admit, I did cheat it in a few spots. This isn't exactly 100% representation on what, of what was I seeing, and I did it to increase the design uh, of the painting and make it more appealing. So if there were some objects that were hard to read because they were overlapping, I moved them slightly to the left or to the right or up and down just to increase the read uh, of them in the painting. Later, the viewer have no photo of uh, how the still life looked like in reality, uh, so he cannot compare it. This is not a contest of do it as exact as it was in reality, it is more how to create an appealing and good-looking picture from what you see. My secret of setting up interesting still life is very limited colors. Most of the objects here fall in one color family. The pot, onions, tomato and bowl together with wall and table are all family of warm colors. For a strong contrast I chose complementary blue cloth. There are no greens and most of the oranges and yellows are quite dim. In traditional oil painting, I would limit my palette to just uh, choosing a few tubes of paint. Harmony in colors comes from limitation. Using too much hues and too pure colors ends often with looking like mud. I will let you enjoy watching the rest of the process of the painting. Really, when it comes to capturing the realism uh, and painting from nature, most important is observation. The complete painting took me about three hours. Uh, it is incredible fun to watch paint mix and impasto catch light, everything coming together as so realistic as real paint, without any drawbacks of uh, stains of paint on every surface and uh, waiting for paint to dry, no headache from smelling turpentine. Especially as my current apartment is very small, I can't even create a proper studio to paint with oils. Uh, so this alternative of painter and how well it works, uh, I can enjoy painting with no worry in the world. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments what you think. Hey, do you also have pickling jar in your kitchen? The big brown pot in the still life is full of sauerkraut, almost ready to be eaten. Maybe one week more. Also homemade kimchi is the best thing. What are your favorite pickled foods?